Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, it's Matt O'Leary, and uh, this year, this 2019 we've got here, it's been pretty good to us so far. There have been big albums, big wins in kind of my wheelhouse, the psych rock, the jazz rock, the math rock, the things that I'm very familiar with. But there have also been a number of albums that have really won me over from kind of the periphery of what I'm comfortable with and what I'm usually listening to, specifically within the realms of modern classical and instrumental music and experimental pop and electronica. So I wanted to cover just some of those today. It's my best surprises and best discoveries of 2019. If for the rest of the year you need music flowing in on a regular basis, you feel a little bit parched like that Spongebob episode with the pizza delivery. Then I also make a, a monthly Spotify playlist with my favorite songs of the month, usually about 20 to 25 tracks in there, and I'm gonna link that down in the description, so just go. First up is uh, one of the pianists from Snarky Puppy who has written a lot of hot tracks for the band including Gemini, and like everyone else in that group, kind of a genius. It's Justin Stanton with the album Secret Place. I feel like Stanton really showcases his range on this album. Every single tone and instrument is is showcased on one track or another. And for fans of Snarky Puppy, I feel like there are some really familiar moments, like that lumbering bass line on Replicant, or the, the very Culture Vulture-esque low-key lounge of Survival Imperative. Even uh, Snarky Puppy's trumpet player Maz lends some suave lead vocals on the funky pop number automatic attraction. This maybe doesn't have quite the, the same emotional pull as some of Snarky's best stuff, like those stunning climaxes. The title track being an exception, because that makes me cry. But still, an, an outstanding and an adventurous release for sure. Next up we got some psych and electronic rock, this one with no guitar to be found. This is one of my finds of the year. It's Philadelphia Sunstep with their third album, Fossil Lilies. An earworm of a melody on almost every single song. They combine the electronic eclecticism of Animal Collective with the jazziness of Sid Arthur and I'm here for it. I also hear a little bit of the band The Velvet Teen. I'm sure this one's gonna end up somewhere on my year-end list, so you gotta catch it. This minimalist R&B and soul really seems to be the, the music of the moment right now, so this next one really fits in snugly with that. It's Rosie Lowe, the English songwriter with her album You. But unlike a lot of that stuff, I feel like there's not the same unintentional blank space. There's not that sparseness to it and, and the mumbling, like, no mumbling, but instead every single spot, every single moment feels intentionally poured over. Lyrically, it, it might not amount to anything too substantial or too unique just because of this sea of very flirtatious female empowerment narratives out there already. But she has a real knack for stringing these super catchy, super sticky lines together like on the song Pharaoh. The way the, the opener lifeline just sort of slowly, dramatically pulses along, makes that razor-sharp beat when it finally hits in the song The Way really pop. There are just a, a few great summer jams on you, and it's an album that's really cut out for the honeymoon phase that sort of fizzles out near the end like a summer crush would. But I'm having a ball with this thing. I'm having tons of fun, and she brings on some favorite artists of mine, like Jordan Riquet and Floating Points. Next up is the best pop punk album of the year. It's a major surprise to me. It's the Canadian band Pop's third album, Morbid Stuff. And the reason I, I say that is because stuff in this genre I usually just give an instant pass. Like, it's not a sound I love, the very energy over melody sort of approach, and the self-deprecating that. This isn't really that different from that, but my wife really loved it. So it just sort of floated around just in the car, at home, here and there, and I picked up on the songs a little bit, and here you go, it's on the list. It's kind of come around on me like a dog that doesn't care if you're a dog person or not, you know, like wakes you up in the morning with a very non-discriminatory lick to the face. I can't deny the, the very progressive structure of Scorpion Hill, or the breakneck mood changes on Bloody Mary Kate and Ashley. It's a little snotty, it's depressing at times with this insistence that we live in a meaningless, blasé world. Buying organic food or, or meditating to fill the void. But that putrid attitude has a, a pretty nice sugary coating that I'm kind of into. We've had someone from Snarky Puppy, we've had Pup, and now it's Puppy 
with the goat. Imagine Built to Spill and Pantera and Ghost forming a, a super band, and that's pretty much Puppy. Puppy kind of sounds like the uh, the the house band on Guitar Hero. You have these sunshiny hooks on Poor Me or, or Nightwalker, pretty much any song on this thing. These moments scream this early 90s power pop like Teenage Fan Club or, or Jellyfish. Then you get this 80s hair metal guitar and kind of a caricature or parody of the occult like Ghost does. And the vocalist sounds exactly like the Ghost guy, like probably a little less Sweden and a little more California. Then there are these very simplistic hardcore riffs like a, a band like Turnstile. It seriously is just all over the map, like it's very tough to pigeonhole. And I'm feeling it, this is a great album. My favorite tracks are Entombed and Black Hole and Nightwalker. All right, we got two great albums left. This first one is a collaboration between electronic artist James Zoo, um, who's from Brain Feeder Records, which is uh, Flying Lotus's label, and the Grammy-winning Dutch Orchestra Metropole Orchest, who have worked with a ton of indie artists at this point. The collab album between them and, and Snarky Puppy, actually, Silva, was so flipping amazing that I, I just lap up anything that has their name on it. And James's first album really intrigued me with some completely bizarre and unique soundscapes. Very abrasive at times, but also a lot of soul to it. This one's more on the serene and, and meditative side with some very mystical orchestral swells. I love how James U just weaves in and around the orchestra. His parts are very distinctive from the orchestra, but just as majestic, just as melodically compelling as any string part. It's a great, great album. Okay, there are some other albums that I really love, have been big surprises, but I just really want to wait to reveal them till the end of the year. But I guess I'll open it up and, and tell you about one right now. It's another Dutch artist and a very prolific, very experienced songwriter and producer who was on uh, that Rex Orange County song, Lovin' Is Easy. But his other six albums and, and just countless projects and collaborations have been all but ignored by the US market at least. But City Pop by Benny Sings is an airtight listen, just infectious from front to back. It kind of does this soft rock, funk, kind of wolf pecky thing with some disco beats, with some hip hop break beats, but with the silkiness and style of R&B. I want to take a tropical getaway, a, a vacation, and just have the songs Dreamin' and Naka Me Guru just on continuous loop, just run them. The wistful playfulness of everything I know kind of reminds me of Joey Dosick from Wolfpack. And familiar is the catchiest thing I ever heard. He's just a hit machine, like every single song could make it with the mainstream, it could regale the radio listener. Uh, oh, it's just, we gotta get it out there, it's just exposure, we gotta take any of these songs, just kind of blindfolded, pick one and throw it on the radio, and then you made it. Before I wrap this up, I want to give a couple other really beautiful piano albums that serve as fantastic work flow kind of music. Um, one is from the math rock guitarist from the band Covet, Yvette Young. The others are the new albums from Alluvium and Hauschka. There's a ton of other stuff I could talk about, like, a lot, but I'm just going to leave it at that, so... Check out those monthly Spotify playlists. I'm going to link the June one down below again. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. And as always, thank you so much for watching.